Thank you for joining me for our last in the series on hymns. And this time we're going to reflect on one that maybe, maybe you know. And can it be? Once in another district, my circuit was asked to host Synod, which is not an unusual experience in the life of the Methodist Church. And so in the service, we sang a variety of hymns, new ones, hymns from around the world. And the congregation sang them lustily and with good courage, not half dead, but instead they lifted up their voices with strength as instructed by Mr. Wesley. He would have been most proud. The final hymn was And Can It Be? And it was as though something came over that church filled with good Methodists. The depth of feeling of love for this hymn was exclaimed throughout the room. The joy was palpable. The, the hymn, as you know, was about Wesley's conversion. We might say that this hymn talks about when and how Wesley got the faith or when he was able to say, oh, now I get what this relationship with God is all about. We all have those experiences. For some, it may be a lifelong knowing. For others, it's a dramatic moment like scales falling from eyes. For others, it's a combination of the two. And for others, it might be something in between. For Wesley, the experience was deeply humbling. He could not understand why God would even be interested in him. And yet it empowered him, gave him strength and courage to share this new insight and this new, this new understanding of hope. And Methodists and United People and Uniting People and other churches and many others all find hope and courage in the experience and the witness of the Wesleys. No wonder that all those Methodists that day sang lustily and courageously, lively, with strength and with joy. You see, to be a person of faith is to sing our faith lustily and courageously, lively, with courage and joy every day, humbly, bravely, and always in hope. You see, to be humble is to know that we need God and God's vision of shalom for everyone. To be humble is to take the spotlight off ourselves and instead see God's broader vision and yet know that God has a place for us within it. And it is also about being brave enough to live that every day. I got it one day in my home church overlooking the sea. I was surrounded by family, mom, dad, my sisters and brother, Nan and Pop Oates, various aunties and uncles and cousins, all singing and praising God. And it came to me, this God stuff makes sense. This God life was and is meant for me. It came like a lightning bolt and then surrounded me in indescribable warmth and love. And I understood just what Wesley was saying. My reply was, really God? Me? I trust in you. So let's go for it. In 1992, when I was ordained and knelt at the rail and felt the weight of hands, both physical and those of the ages, this verse came to me. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That verse comes to mind in times of joy, challenge, confusion, calm, and in blessed assurance. 
It has enabled me to remember that I too rose up and followed Jesus and Jesus's way. And that I rise up every morning and do exactly the same. My prayer is that we and the church ever do likewise. Yeah. Uh -huh.